In the distant and mysterious valleys of space, where the stars twinkle against the dark mantle of night, a huge galaxy is hiding, which attracts the eyes of astronomy lovers, dreamers, and writers. This galaxy is named Andromeda. And today we will make a grand journey to her heart, to the very center of the galaxy. An alluring adventure, mesmerizing with bright colors and the promise of new discoveries begins right here. Andromeda Galaxy or M31. Our nearest stellar neighbor. On a clear night, it can be seen in the sky with the naked eye. It is located at a distance of about two and a half million light years from Earth, and its diameter is approximately 200,000 light years. And although it seems incredibly far away, but in fact it is not so at all. Unlike the others, the galaxy has a bright gallo or giant luminous cloud consisting of stars, as well as very discharged ionized gas. If this halo could be seen without magnifying glasses in the visible spectrum, it would be three times larger than the constellation Ursa Major. The area of the huge head around the Andromeda galaxy is huge and is located about halfway to the disk of the Milky Way, and in some places even bumps into our galaxy's own halo. Yes, in fact, the galaxies are incredibly close to each other. We are starting our journey. Flying through the spherical component of M31, we are getting closer and closer directly to the disk of the galaxy with noticeable spiral arms. However, the Andromeda galaxy, unlike the Milky Way, has a significantly thickened disk. According to the standard cosmological model, most galaxies were formed as a result of mergers or acquisitions of small satellite galaxies. And the presence of a blurred thickened disk in the Andromeda galaxy is a sign of just such mergers. And using spectra of different ages and types of stars, it is possible to calculate the variance, that is, to determine how much the speed of a given star differs from the average speed of its nearest neighbors. The results were very interesting. The older the stars, the higher the dispersion and velocities. That is, it is much more likely that young stars are quietly rotating around the center of Andromeda, while stars in which the nuclear reaction is at an end are moving at enormous speeds. Moreover, even for the Kama stars in Andromeda, the dispersion is three times higher than that of the stars of the Milky Way. This clearly indicates that the history of the galaxy M31 is much more complex and full of events. There are many segments of spiral arms in the disk of the galaxy. In the inner regions of the galaxy, they stand out mainly due to dust, and in the outer ones, due to supergiants and regions of ionized hydrogen. M31 contains more than 400 globular clusters, among them the Mile 2 cluster is the brightest cluster in the local group, which has a mass of 7 to 15 million solar masses and is possibly the core of a dwarf galaxy destroyed in the past. On average, globular star clusters in the Andromeda galaxy have a greater metallicity than in the Milky Way. It is also interesting that in Andromeda there are clusters with a large number of stars, occupying three ranges from 100 to 500 million years, about 5 billion years, and the third from 10 to 12 billion years. In the Milky Way, for comparison, globular clusters are almost equally old, with an age of 10 to 12 billion years, and there are no young ones at all. The presence of young clusters in Andromeda is probably explained by its voracious appetite, that is, the absorption of irregular galaxies in the past. In addition, there are star clusters in M31 that are intermediate in characteristics between globular star clusters and dwarf spheroidal galaxies, whose analogues have not been found in the Milky Way. Although their luminosity and colors are the same as those of ordinary globular clusters, they differ only in very large radii, about 30 parsecs. Andromeda's interstellar medium consists of gas with different temperatures and dust, which are enough here for it to be observed in the form of dust bands partially obscuring the light from the northwest side of the bulge. Dust bands, and there are more than 700 of them, are clearly visible due to the large angle of inclination of the galactic plane. 
About 4,000 regions of active star formation from ionized hydrogen are known in Andromeda, as well as 26 supernova remnants and 20 more candidates for such objects. In addition to them, more than 4,000 planetary nebulae are known, and there are estimated to be about 8,000 of them in the galaxy. At least 35,000 variable stars of various types have been discovered in M31. First of all, these are Cepheids, bright stars with a certain dependence between the period and luminosity, by which you can determine the distance to them. Most Cepheids have a period of 5 to 125 days. Other well-known types of variables include bright blue variables, lyre-type variables, long-period variables, and AR-type variables of the Northern Crown. On average, about 50 new stars flare up in the Andromeda galaxy per year, and at least 800 such objects have been registered here. At the same time, the ratio of the frequency of outbursts of new stars to the luminosity of the galaxy is quite low compared to other galaxies, which may be due to the low rate of star formation. About 2,000 sources of X-ray radiation are also known in M31. X-ray binaries and supernova remnants, as well as angry white dwarfs with high temperatures. Some sources are observed in the globular clusters of the galaxy. The bright cluster M31 is higher in the X-ray range than in the globular clusters of the Milky Way. Another difference between the sources in the Andromeda galaxy and the sources in our galaxy is that they are concentrated in the center. Currently, only one candidate exoplanet has been discovered in M31, the temporary name Pi Hey 99N2. But there is no doubt that in the Andromeda galaxy there are millions or even billions of planets orbiting its numerous stars, filled with a lifeless atmosphere or possibly other flora, fauna, organisms and creatures. Finding planets outside the solar system is extremely difficult because the planet does not emit light. All exoplanets whose existence has been confirmed are located within our galaxy. But with the development of optical technologies and data processing methods, we will be able to find more planets every year, located further in the universe. Meanwhile, we have approached the central part of Andromeda, called the bulge or spherical densification in stars in the center of the galaxy, as well as the brightest part of the spherical subsystem of the galaxy. This image taken by an orbiting telescope shows the crowded, like a space bus, and very bright central region of the Andromeda galaxy. The bright dot to the right of the center is a group of stars located around the galaxy's black hole. The blue dots scattered throughout the image are ultra-blue stars that prematurely shed their outer layers of matter, exposing extremely hot cores. It is likely that there are many other similarly hot stars in this central part of Andromeda that are in earlier stages of their lives, but they are too dim for us to detect them right now. On our journey through the Andromeda galaxy, we have come close to its very heart. This image shows the clearest image of the galaxy's core ever taken in visible light. A supermassive black hole with a mass of more than 100 million solar masses is located in the center. Event Horizon The nearest area around the black hole where light can still penetrate is too small to be seen, but it is located near the center of a compact cluster of blue stars in the center of the image. A compact cluster of blue stars surrounded by a larger double core M31. A double core is an elliptical ring of old reddish stars orbiting a black hole, but more distant than blue stars. When the stars are at the farthest point of their orbit, they move slower and create the illusion of a second core. The age of the blue stars surrounding the black hole does not exceed 200 million years, so they must have been formed near the black hole as a result of a sharp burst of star formation. Massive blue stars are so short-lived that they would not have enough time to migrate to a black hole if, of course, they formed elsewhere. Astronomers are trying to understand how, apparently, 
young stars formed so deep inside the gravitational grip of a black hole and how did they survive in such an extreme environment at all? As we delve deeper into the mystery that is the black hole at M31, its enormous size, power and complexity are revealed, giving us amazing insights into its fantastic role in shaping the cosmic landscape. Its irresistible gravitational force not only attracts stars, gas and dust, but also forces them to move in an orbit and spiral to the event horizon, an invisible boundary where nothing, not even light, can escape its capture. As technology advances and our ability to explore the universe expands, the supermassive black hole at the center of the Andromeda galaxy will become an even more exciting object for scientific research. As we continue to unravel its mysteries, this cosmic miracle will undoubtedly be a beacon of knowledge for many generations of astronomers and enthusiasts. But our goal is to dive into the black hole of this galaxy, possibly by sending an umbrella there. A moment and the device disappears from the radar. Nice try. It seems our journey has come to an end. Today we crossed the vast expanses of space in the Andromeda galaxy, encountering wonders that are difficult to imagine. Supernovae emitting unearthly light, nebulae swirling like heavenly smoke, newborn stars emerging from their gaseous manger, and of course a huge supermassive black hole playing the main part in the symphony of cosmic evolution. The journey to the center of Andromeda was just the beginning, and we are ready to chart a new course for the next great adventure and new discoveries.